So straight up, can you actually take a pill to reverse your gray hair? Is that even theoretically possible? The answer is yes, it is possible and it's been done many times, but there are a couple of caveats. Stay tuned to find out. So we all know that gray or silver hair is a sign of aging and by the time they're 50, most people will have to deal with some degree of gray hair. For men, the graying typically starts at the temples and the sideburns and for women, it starts at the boundaries of the scalp. There is a genetic component to this. In other words, some people are more genetically predisposed to it than others. Now, there are some instances where a nutritional deficiency does play a role. The most common deficiencies being iron, copper, and vitamin B12. Now, in these cases, it is possible to supplement and see a reversal of gray hair. So, the color in our hair comes from the deposition of melanin. This is the same melanin that pigments our skin. And just like it happens with the skin, the cells that make this melanin are called melanocytes. Though the melanocytes and the follicles are slightly different in appearance to those on the skin. Now, the hair follicle melanocytes, they make their melanin during the anagen phase of the growth cycle. That's when the hair is actively growing. And the various types of hair color, like brown, black, uh, brown, or whatever, these are down to the differences in the quantity of melanin, as well as the, spe as the differences in the specific types of melanin being deposited. But when there is no melanin at all, the hair comes out gray. And the reason there's no melanin is because the melanocytes have died. Now, this happens between the hair growth cycle. So a hair that's come out and is fully pigmented, it can't lose its pigment, it can't go gray. First, the hair must fall off, and between the old hair and the new antigen hair, that's when the melanocytes die off. And the new hair that grows out, it's gonna be gray. And scientists, they don't really understand the reason why this happens. They don't understand the cause behind the death of the melanocytes. Now, it's very possible, indeed very likely, that oxidative stress plays a major role. And we see that environmental factors that cause oxidative stress, they can contribute to hair graying. These are things like smoking, pollution, stress, etc. And another factor that's thought to play a role is inflammation. So covering up gray hair with dyes is really messy, costly, and it's really, really temporary. So you have to keep on doing it or the, hair, the gray hair is going to come out and then the concealment is going to become obvious. So how nice would it be if we had a real cure instead, something like a pill that you take or a topical that you apply and the hair actually regains back its color, its true, its true color. And guess what? That is possible, at least on some occasions. A recent review, which I've linked to in the description, looked at all the published studies that found hair repigmentation after certain treatments. Let's have a look. So out of all the treatments used, the one, the one for which we have the most data points is Psorolin plus UVA or PUVA as it's often abbreviated to. This is a very powerful treatment and normally it's for patients that have diseases of the skin like psoriasis or vitiligo. Psorolin is an oral medication and it's used in combination with the UVA uh, radiation. So the patient basically takes the, takes the psorolin orally and then they sit in a uh, special chamber or something like a sunbed which emits the UVA and a certain radiation uh, frequency. So a 1986 study that looked at this recruited 37 patients with premature graying of the hair. Now these were young people and the graying was premature, so they were between 10 and 20 years old. And close, of, close to half of them had complete repigmentation of the gray hair after treatment with PUVA. And the remaining were more or less evenly split between partial repigmentation or no repigmentation. These are pretty impressive results, but again, bear in mind that these were all very young patients. And the downside to this treatment is that it's very powerful and you have to be very careful, otherwise you're going to get very powerful side effects. Another powerful medication that's been found to reverse gray hair in some people is imatinib. This is an oral chemotherapy medication. And in a study of 133 leukemia patients who were being treated with imatinib, 7% saw reversal of the gray hairs a few months into treatment. In 2017, we got another study on cancer patients 
This was patients that were undergoing monoclonal antibody treatment for cancer. And the researchers reported that they, they observed 14 individuals who basically had substantial repigmentation, in many cases complete. Most of these patients were men. And as you can see in these photos, we're not talking about subtle differences. The, the hair basically went from gray to black. And then we have lots of case reports with the various other drugs. So a case report is when a doctor is treating a patient and then they, they note that this one patient uh, had uh, gray hair pigmentation. So it's kind of like a one-off. Now this is very interesting, but in terms of scientific power, it's kind of like the weakest kind of evidence you can have. Nevertheless, these case reports are fascinating and suggestive, and they cover a wide range of medications. These include latanoprost eye drops for glaucoma, tamoxifen for breast cancer, levodopa for Parkinson's disease, interferon A for chronic hepatitis, and various others. So all these have, uh, have been observed, in some patients at least, to lead to gray hair repigmentation. So what about supplements? Now we have uh, very interesting evidence that in some people at least, supplementation with various uh, vitamins of the B family can lead to gray hair reversal. And the most promising of these is calcium pentothenate. This is the calcium salt of the B5 vitamin. For example, we had this very interesting study with two patients uh, with premature graying and it noted repigmentation as early as one month after the start of treatment. A follow-up to this study uh, followed up seven girls for three years and the girls were between 12 and 31 and the study found that a combination of calcium pentothenate, a B vitamin complex and vitamin E resulted in dramatic improvement in four of the seven patients. Another vitamin that's been studied quite a bit is vitamin B10 or PABA. There were several studies in the 1940s and 50s that found that supplementation with this vitamin uh, could lead sometimes to gray hair reversal. Unfortunately, we haven't had much uh, studies published since then. So the scientific evidence, some of which we've covered in today's video, leaves no doubt that hair graying is reversible in principle. In other words, there's no biological law that prohibits the melanocytes from coming back. And this is especially the case in premature graying, so in younger people. In older people, it's far more rare to, to have a gray hair reversal. Now, the problem we have with, these, uh, with this research is that it's limited, not just in number, but also uh, in, re in reference to the, the total number of patients recruited. And in many cases, it's just case reports. That's one single isolate, isolated patient. But setting that problem aside, we have a, a pretty good picture nonetheless. And the basic theme that emerges is that the medications that can lead to gray hair reversal they're all very, very powerful and they can have serious side effects. These are the kind of treatments you give for, seri for serious diseases like uh, cancer or Parkinson's disease or psoriasis. It's not something that you're going to prescribe to somebody who has graying hair. Now, when it comes to supplements, the best options seem to be from the B family of vitamins. These are safe and relatively free of side effects, but they're only going to work for a small minority of people. Now, what about research specifically targeting treatments for gray hair reversal? So a treatment that, you know, has a, a tolerable, acceptable safety profile. Now, as of today, there is very limited research aimed at this. For example, last year, a joint Korean-US team of research has published some in vitro experiments very basic exploratory science. So we're probably still, I'd say, decades away from developing a viable treatment. I hope you enjoyed today's video and look forward to your thoughts in the comments.